Welcome back to the fifth and final part of our video tutorial series where we are learning how to create a catcher game using Pi Game Zero. If we just have a quick play of what we've got so far, our game's looking pretty sweet. We've got our little pirate ship moving across the bottom. We can collect coins to get one point. We can hit the skulls to lose points. And we can hit bombs to lose our lives. What we need to do here is after our three lives are up, we need to finish the game. Okay, so not too much to go. What I'm going to do first of all is head up to the top section of my game where I've set up my game variables. We need to make another new variable here called game over. And we're going to set that to false with a capital F. Okay, so when our game starts, game over will equal false because it's obviously not over. We've just started playing it. Once we lose our three lives though, then we want to change that to true because that's when the game will be over. So in our update section here is where we're going to do that. Now to be able to update this variable in the update section, we need to make this variable here game over a global variable. So let's go down just in the update section and write global game over. And that makes the game over variable global, which means we can now update it in this function. So let's go down to the bottom of that update function where we've got the bomb. We're going to go just below the bomb. All right. Um, so once we are down underneath the bomb, let's put a comment in. We'll say, end the game if the three lives run out. I guess that makes sense. Um, so we're going to do an if statement. So if our lives equals equals zero and put a colon. Now you're probably wondering why I put two equal signs instead of one. We put two equal signs when we're testing a condition or testing something out. In this case we're testing to see if our lives are equal to zero. If they are then what do we do? If they're not then what do we do? So if our lives are equal to zero that means the game's over. So we're going to change that variable we created before game over and it's going to be equal to true. Because we're just setting a value now, we're not testing anything, we just use one equals sign. So game over will equal true. Okay, now when game over equals true, we're going to change how things are drawn on the screen. Okay, so I'm going to leave bg.draw alone, but I'm going to make a bit of a gap underneath that. And I'm going to write an if statement. If game over equals, actually I don't even need to write equals, so if the game is over. So that means if game over equals true, but the short way to write it is if the game is over. We are going to write some text on the screen. So let's think back to our last one. We wrote screen.draw.text. And in brackets and quotation marks, I'm going to write in capital letters game over. And then I'm going to put a comma and in brackets, I'm going to set the coordinates for this text. It's going to be 230 and 200. So 230 on the x-axis, 200 on the y-axis. I'll then put a comma, um, change the color to equal white. So color equals and then in brackets white. And then we've got the font name, which is the same as before, that public pixel. Um, put a comma after that and the font size that we're looking for is going to be 30. And then I'll close my brackets up. Okay, so we're going to draw some text on the screen once the game is over. It will say game over. They're the coordinates, the X and Y values that we're going to be using. Colors white. The font is that fancy computery looking font. And the font size is going to be equal to 30. That's the first thing we're going to write on the screen. Um, and then the second thing we're going to write is what our final score was. So I'm just going to copy and paste that, what I just wrote. Instead of writing game over, I'm going to write in capital letters, final score, colon, and a space. Now after that little quotation mark, I want you to write plus and write str, and then in brackets, score. Okay, that's like what we did down here before. We're just writing in the word final score and then getting that variable score to go after it. So it puts in whatever our final score was into this little um, line of text. Our X and Y coordinates will change to 180 for the X value and 300 for the Y value. Color will stay as white, font name, public pixel, font size will leave us 30. 
Well, let's give that, a, actually we won't give it a bash yet. So that's what happens if the game is over. What we're going to do then is just write else down here and then highlight what we have left and press tab. Okay, so I might put in some comments to explain what's happening here with this if else statement. So if the game is over, so show the following um, text if the game is over and then down here show the following elements if the game is not over. Okay, so this little section here is what we show when the game's finished. In the else section, this is what we're showing when the game is not over. So we're still drawing all the elements on our page and the scoreboard and the lives board at the top. Uh, let's give that a test run to make sure that is working. So everything's working there. Let's lose our three lives and see what happens. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, the issue is in the background here, you can still hear bombs going off and you can see my score changing. That means everything is still falling out of the sky, even though the game has finished. So I think up here in the update section, where we've got if lives equals zero and the game over equals true, let's set our coin.y value to zero. Uh, we'll set our bomb.y value to zero. And we'll set our skull.y value to zero. That means once the game is finished, those three elements that fall down the page will just reset themselves to the top of the page and they're not going to go anywhere. Um, let's try that and make sure that's okay. So we'll quickly lose our three lives if we can. Now just keep an ear out for any sounds to see if our score changes. I'm moving my ship around in the background there even though you can't see it. Our score doesn't seem to be changing. So those three elements, the coin, the bomb and the skull, should be positioned somewhere at the very top of the page and just stuck there now so they're not going to fall down and adjust our score in any way. Alright, so that's probably a good enough little hack to prevent that from happening. One other thing I wouldn't mind doing is just playing a sound at the end um, to just show that it is the game over. So a bit of a, I don't know, a death sound, I guess you could call it, to just say we have died and that's game over. So I'm going to make a final variable up the top called death sound. Actually, I won't do that yet. I just want to show you what happens when I do play this um, death sound. So if our lives equal zero, what we could do is just play a sound. Uh, here it is here called game over. So if we just write in sounds dot game over dot play, you'd think that would work. So once our lives equals zero, we should hear that game over sound play. But watch what happens. This keeps playing. Alright, so we don't want that sound to play over and over again. We want it to play just once. And it's a bit of a confusing way to go about it, but we do need to create a variable to um, make that work properly. So back up the top here where we are setting up our game variables, underneath the game over one, we're going to make one more called death sound. And the death sound is going to be equal to... Uh, what do I want? True or false? I'm going to set it to false because it hasn't played yet. Okay, so we're going to set it to false. And again, I'm going to update this variable death sound inside the update function. So again, it needs to become a global variable. It's starting to become quite tedious writing global and then the variable name after it. Um, so what we can do is actually shorten that. We only need to write global once. Let me put a comma and write those variables we want to be global after it. So I'm going to delete these three lines now. So global, score, lives, game over, and death sound. All those four variables which we created up here are now global, meaning we can update them and change them inside of this update function. So heading back down here, what we're going to do is create another if statement. And we're going to say if the death sound that we just created, if that is equal to false, then we're going to play the sound. And then we're going to reset that death sound variable back to true. 
That means we have played the death sound and we don't need to play it again. Um, that ought to do it, I think. So if the death sound is false, it means we haven't played it. Then we play it. And then we change it back to true and it should stop playing. Let's give it a test run. Final test. Hopefully this is it. Bang. Bang. And bang. Beauty. So that works nicely, and that is our game all finished off by the looks of things. So um, I think I've got enough comments in there. Everything's looking pretty tidy. So that's your first game in Pi Game done and dusted. Um, I will catch you in a future video tutorial where we'll start to expand on what we've learnt in this tutorial and make ourselves a slightly harder game. So I will catch you then.